Hello everyone. Today we're going to go over the Microsoft Network Policy Server. So this time we're going to have sound on it, whereas the other one we didn't. So uh, I want to briefly go over the uh, configuration of this. So got some notes up here. You know, you make sure you set up your SSID, your type of radius being used, etc. And uh, you know, let's jump right into this thing. And uh, so any comments you have, uh, you know, please let me know. So right here I'm on the we're using the Meraki. So we're setting up the uh, radius in the Meraki. Um, Microsoft MPS server is installed and running. So uh, basically put your IP, primary, secondary, your ports, which are default, Microsoft 1812. Um, recommend you always change those, but uh, it requires some work. And then you put in the shared secret and uh, you know, do a test, make sure it works, try an AD account. And then you um, um, point over to the um, network policy server, and that's where you're probably going to do most of the work. So with the access points uh, all connected to um, the Meraki cloud, it uh, makes that part of it somewhat easy, where you just have to do that one interface and away you go. If you had a standalone controller, uh, you're going to point the MPS server to the control or the on-premise the cloud you can do the individual devices so uh, as you can see here we've got the NPS the network policy server um, configuration up and running and uh, I'm just going to enter some the, uh, the data that's in there So as you can see here, you know, just uh, got some fields here that you need to enter the friendly name, other configuration information, IP address information. So So one of the things that you can do here is, uh, I've seen some people do this, is instead of an IP address, you add a subnet in there where you're going to add uh, multiple uh, access points, sorry, uh, brain fart there, and uh, add a little get out. I don't recommend doing the subnet. I mean, obviously, you're gonna have you know, some systems are gonna have a lot of devices, and uh, you know it's it could be many across many subnets. Uh, honestly, if they're across many subnets, and you don't have a management network for these uh, access points, uh, you got bigger issues. Uh, it means you didn't probably follow best practice. You know, set up management uh, in IP for these devices and put static IPs on these things. So. Um, you know, you got You can't just plug stuff in and then, you know, hope that it works. And you know, hey, I've I've done all this infrastructure. You know, you, you can't do that. You got to do the best thing uh, that the industry has and the manufacturer, and you have to meld those together. So, um, like I do a lot of cybersecurity and information security, business continuity, uh, crisis management, etc. And a lot of the times I tell organizations I can't even do a security audit because you guys aren't even building these servers correctly. You have just you know a bunch of Active Directory servers and they're just connected to each other. You have network devices that don't even have management IPs. The switches are set for DHCP, etc., etc., etc. And then you run into these problems and you're like, what do you mean we have a problem? Well, you know... You, you can just plug stuff together, but anyway, um, as I'm going through this configuration, so obviously if there's any spots in here that uh, you have questions, you know, feel, please feel free to comment and uh, let me know, you know what, what looks like it works, what looks like it doesn't work. So uh, once again, you know, we've got the Meraki side of this done, and this could be any other access point. And then we've got the MPS setting up the clients. Uh, we went with the subnet. I recommend you go with a 
the uh, the management IPs, but um, you can do whatever flavor you want. That allows the flexibility of this, um, because when you do the subnet, um, it makes it a little harder to track which client is having the problem. So as you can see, we're just going through the the policies, setting them up. And there's quite a few different ways that you can set this up. Uh, I mentioned quite a few ways uh, you could set up uh, similar to like remote access, VPN. You can um, get gr very, very granular. Um, you can do uh, not only wireless, for example, uh, user authentication. You can do certificate authentication. You can use uh, machine authentication. Uh, you can use uh, all three, step in each one. Uh, obviously getting more and more complex and then obviously if there's a problem if you're not experienced with this then you could run into some serious issues if something doesn't work right uh, usually it's you know you got this radius server and uh, during the initial setup you you know you know if there's something wrong but it's after it's deployed and someone goes in and makes a configuration change then um, you could run into issues So, uh, as you go through the configuration and get everything set up, yeah. <clears throat> you set up the policies, the names, the connection types, and uh, get everything going through. So, um, like I mentioned, many different aspects. Um, a lot of this, uh, uh, you have to make sure that you have your Active Directory. If you're going to use containers uh, or an OU, you have to make sure that uh, you have all that ready to go before you build this. Otherwise, you're going to point this to a spot that doesn't exist and it's not going to work, and then you're going to have a problem. So, you got to do things A, B, C, not A, C, D, F. Uh, you do. If you want to use user groups, you already have a group created. Great, like I mentioned, uh, you know, have everything ready to go before you do it. Have the you know network policy server built. Have the Meraki set up and running. Maybe using WPA2 authentication. Have Active Directory set up properly. Uh, if you're pulling from a uh, you know the the the, um, the primary DC, you know the the Fismo role server or the catalog server. Um, you know, make sure it has everything. If you're pulling from a read-only replica, um, then that's a different, uh, you know, a little bit different, but um, same thing. Um, basically, just go through all the options, get everything set up, and um, use the logs if there's anything wrong that doesn't look right. So this is a pristine environment that's being set up, so there is nothing new in here. So if you're doing this on an existing NPS server that has already existing policies, you could run into some issues because you could have things stepping on each other. And then, um, you know, once you get all of this stuff set up, you know, you can test it out and make sure everything works. And then at some point you're going to test the radius authentication. So at the beginning you tested it, didn't work, and then now you go back over here. You know, probably at the you know, um, we're about at the uh, 10 minute mark that we're doing the testing. So if you if you're jumping around, you can go back to the 10 20 10 minute 22 second, and you can see the testing being done. And you got a success. So um, hopefully this helps explain Microsoft's network policy server and setting up Radius for a um, wireless. 
and then you have uh, you know the, going through the logs here you know that's the most important thing is uh, you have to go through the logs Microsoft uh, puts everything in the logs and tells you what's wrong if there's uh, an issue going on you, you just you have to go through the logs and a lot of people don't like to go through the logs so it's best just to go through there and make make use of them they're there for a reason if you open a particular with Microsoft they're gonna go through the logs and want the log dumps so just you know get used to them they'll tell you what's wrong what's working what's not working and then um, you can get everything set up but um, you know this is a hopefully a quick example of a network policy server and getting it set up um, any questions please put them in the comments let me know I will be glad to help I know a few people have been asking questions and um, it, it's you know it's, I try and answer as best as possible but there's many different scenarios that people could be running into so you know it's hard to you know explain one way like I said this is the pristine environment that's being set up if you have a environment that uh, you know has problems, you know the bunch of red errors in the event logs, uh, it might be a little more complicated to set up because you could be having existing issues that you know you you know you got existing baggage that you got to fix first. And I know everybody wants to get in, get ready to set up, get this going, but uh, you know if you're running into other issues, <laughs> you know you 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 got to fix, get your house in shape first, clean your house and then get everything working and then you can go and um, you know get things set up properly so otherwise you're going to be in a world of hurt uh, anyway hope this helps let me know in the comments if you like it or not um, please subscribe if you like it and um, please uh, you know give me a thumbs up if you like it appreciate it thank you